Hey everyone, Dan from Mod one here. I want to get you started on using the develop module. If you don't know about the develop module, it's the place where you're going to do your raw processing. That's the basics like exposure, brightness, contrast, adjusting the white balance, cropping, removing distractions, and making local brightness and contrast adjustments. Let me give you a little tour and then we'll show you how to use it. So I've opened a photo in to develop. I've done that by selecting a photo and browse and clicking over here on develop in the module selector. On the left hand side, you'll see the common tools that you're going to use. There's the crop tool, there's local adjustment tools, there's three tools for retouching, the perfect eraser, the retouch brush, and the clone stamp tool, and then the view tool for zooming and panning your photo. Obviously your photo lives in the middle. Zooming and panning and develop is just like zooming and panning inside of browse. You'll click once, the photo will zoom to 100%, and then you can drag around to reposition your photo. And then if you want to zoom back out, just simply click again and it'll zoom back to fit. On the right hand side, you'll see the overall settings tab. This is where all of the overall settings, the stuff that gets applied to the entire photo or the global adjustments, if you will, live. And you'll see the tone and color pane first. This is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you're going to do the majority of your adjustments to tone and color. And then there's a detail pane. That's for adjusting sharpening and removing noise. And then lens correction. We'll talk about all of these in just a second. And then under the local adjustments tab, you can add as many local adjustments as you want to using either the brush or the gradient tool for lightening or darkening or increasing detail in specific areas in your photo. All right, let me show you how to use it. On most photos, I'm going to start off here in the tone and color pane, and I want to get my brightness and contrast and color set for the photo first. I'm going to show you the order that I like to do it in. I always start with the black slider. Every photo needs a little bit of black and a little bit of white in order to have a good contrast range. So I'm going to grab my black slider. I'm going to hold down the J key on my keyboard. That lets me see what we call the clipping. That's the stuff that is real white or real black. So if I hold that J key down and I move the slider around, I'm looking to get just a little bit of real black. So on a photo like this one, I only want just a little bit. Now, depending on your kind of photo, you might want more black. If it's a stage photo or a night shot, there's going to be significantly more pure black. But a photo like this, I need just a little bit. Now we'll do the same thing with the whites. We want to be just on the edge of white with detail. So I'm going to hold down the J key again. I'm going to grab that white slider. And you see as I move it up, I get red. Anything that's red is white without detail. Typically, we don't want white without detail. We want to have just the edge of detail, unless it's a true specular highlight, like a light source like the sun. So I'm actually going to leave the whites alone. There we go. So now I've got real whites and real blacks. The next step is to kind of adjust the overall brightness of the scene. And you can do that with the exposure slider or the midtone slider or the shadow slider, depending on what the photo looks like. Now, in a photo like this, I don't really want to adjust the exposure. If the overall exposure is correct, we're just in a shadowy bowl. So to compensate for that, I'm going to use the midtone slider first to start to what we would say open the photo up. That's going to lighten up the midtones. And then to bring back more in the deeper shadows, I'll use the shadow slider to open up the shadows even more. There we go. So you can see I could brighten the photo without brightening the highlights. There's a lot of subtle highlights in the snow and in the mountains and in the sky that I don't want to lose. There we go. I might even bring those highlights down a little bit with the highlight slider. Cool. There we go. Let me just turn that on and off. There's a big preview button down here at the bottom, which lets you see the before and the after. All right. The next step is to adjust the structure and the haze. The structure is the micro contrast. It really brings the small details to life. So I like to bring that up a little bit. It's always good to zoom in to 100 when you do this. So click once to zoom in so you can see the details in your photo and then adjust that structure slider. There we go. The haze slider is for removing atmospheric distortion or haze. Photo like this doesn't have a whole lot, so I probably don't need to really use much. I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. That'll help bring up some of the detail in the mountains in the background. Next, we'll adjust the color. When you open a raw photo, it's going to automatically come in with the color that was determined by the camera. That'll be the as shot white balance setting. You can then adjust it to a different white balance preset if you want to, or you can use the gray dropper tool to click on something in the photo that you know should be a neutral gray. I'm going to do that. I'm going to click down here on the rocks in the bottom. I know these should be gray. There we go. You can also always use the temperature and tint sliders to adjust it to anything you want it to look like. So you could grab the temperature slider and move it right to make it warmer and left to make it colder. It's really kind of up to you how you want to interpret your photo. 
Let's grab the vibrance. We're gonna bring that up a little bit. The vibrance and the saturation are going to make the colors in your photo stand out and be stronger. The purity sliders will help to reduce a color cast in the highlights or the shadows. That's handy if you wanna remove a color cast in water or in the deep dark shadows, maybe on like a tuxedo. On a photo like this, I'm gonna leave it alone because the ice in the photo has a little bit of a blue cast and that's there in nature. And I don't wanna remove that. I wanna keep that subtle blue cast there. All right, there's the basics in the tone and color pane. It's all about adjusting the brightness and contrast, what we call the tone of the photo, and then adjusting the color using the color section. Next, let's talk about the detail pane. The detail pane is where you adjust the sharpness and reduce the noise in a photo. Whenever you work in the details pane, you definitely want to zoom in to 100%. And what I like to do is try to find an area where I can see detail and a soft, what we call a continuous tone area, like the sky or the water. So I'm going to zoom in right down here. This lets me look at the water and at the rock. When adjusting sharpening and noise reduction, you're looking for a balance of the two. Let's start out with the sharpening slider, and I'm going to bring that up. And what I'm looking for is enhancing any noise in the water, in those smooth areas, while not over sharpening the detail in the photo. A photo like this is very low noise. I can actually go quite high with the sharpening. You can hold down the option key in your keyboard and you can actually view your photo in grayscale. Oftentimes removing the distraction of color makes it easier for you to determine the amount of sharpness that you want to add. The threshold allows you to reduce sharpening on those noise areas. And that can be easily visualized by holding down the option key or that alt key on your keyboard again. And as you move it up, you'll actually see the mask of the sharpened regions. I'm going to bring it to about one for this photo, just to make sure I'm only sharpening the detail areas and not the water. Next, we'll move on to noise reduction. Noise reduction is kind of the opposite of sharpening. We're looking to reduce the noise. Again, we want to make sure we're zoomed into 100% to do this. And I'm going to grab that luminance slider in the noise reduction section. And I'm going to increase that looking for areas of noise. Now, this photo is very low noise, so we're not going to see a lot. But if we keep our eye in the water area, maybe we need to zoom in one more time. Let's zoom up here to 200%. We'll take a look on the water. We can see there's a little bit of noise in there. So I'm just going to increase that luminance noise reduction until the water becomes smooth. There we go. That looks better. There's also options for detail. This is the size of the noise reduction. You can hold down the option key while you adjust the luminance or the detail to view just a grayscale version of it. And this will help change the size of the noise reduction based on the ISO of the photo. Color noise reduction helps to reduce color noise, which is a little different than luminance noise. This photo doesn't really have any color noise, but if it, we did see some, if we held down the option key as we move that color slider back and forth, we could actually see that color noise dissipate. But as you can see, even at zero, looking at the water, we don't really see any noise at all. Now we've adjusted the details in our photo to get the maximum detail in the areas that have it and reduce noise in the areas that don't. The next section is lens correction. Let me zoom back to fit so we can see it. Now, by default, lens correction is going to be on and it's detected my camera and lens automatically. Let me turn it off so you can see a before and after. There's before lens correction and after. It's detected this wide angle lens and it's reduced that distortion across the field and it's also lightened the edges to remove the vignetting that can happen on a wide angle lens. All right, now my photo is pretty much back to what I saw when I was looking at it. Now we can take it to the next level. Let's go over to the tools and talk about how to use those. First is the crop tool. Let's start by cropping our photo. When you select the crop tool, you'll see a grid overlay over your photo to help you compose. Now, if you're like me, oftentimes your photos are just a little bit crooked. Using the level tool is a great way to straighten the photo out. Just click and drag across a straight line like the water. And this will help to rotate the photo just ever so slightly to compensate for the camera not being level. You can then adjust the crop to make it pleasing to you, or you could use one of the built-in presets if you need to crop to a specific aspect ratio. For example, if I know I was going to make an 8x10 print from this, I would use the 8x10 print aspect ratio. You can then crop and size and move the box to recompose your photo to get just the interesting area in your scene. There we go. And then hit the apply button. Next, let's use some of the retouching tools to remove some of the distractions. There happens to be one little rock right over here that's bugging me. Let's zoom in on that rock and I'll use the perfect eraser. The perfect eraser, all you do is brush over what you want to remove and it'll automatically fill it in with pixels that match their surrounding areas. So it fills it in, you can't even tell that that object was there. It's the fastest way to move distractions and reduce blemishes. It's complemented by the retouch brush, 
which is perfect for small dust spots or when there's cases like skin retouching where I want to be able to reduce but rather than completely remove objects. And the last tool is the clone stamp. The clone stamp allows you to take pixels from one part of your image and put it into another one. You can use this to remove distractions, but you can also use it to copy and paste a portion of the image over another area, perhaps if you wanted to reproduce an element again. Let's say I wanted to add one more rock over here to help even out the composition. I'm just going to use the clone stamp tool to copy and paste this rock from here to over here. I'm just going to use my clone stamp. I'm going to make it big enough to cover the rock that I want to copy. I'll hold down the Option key or the Alt key to select it, and then I can simply paste it where I want it to appear in my photo on the other side. There we go. Now we've added another rock to even out our composition. Next, let's talk about some of the local adjustment tools. There's the adjustment brush and the adjustable gradient. I'm going to use the adjustable brush to darken the sky. When I select either of the adjustment tools, it'll switch over to the local adjustments tab. At the top, there are styles for common things like lightning and darkening, thinking them, think of them as burning and dodging, increasing vibrance or detail, plus there's more under the more style button. Plus, you can create your own just by moving the slider to whatever positions you want. Let's say I want to darken the sky. So I'm just going to use the darken option. I'm going to make sure that my perfect brush option is on. The perfect brush is amazing. It detects the color under the brush and stops brushing when the color changes. So watch how I can brush right along the edge of the mountains. My brush is actually touching the mountains, but yet it's not darkening inside of them. It's an amazingly powerful tool for doing local adjustments. So I can just brush right along the edge of the mountains and fill them in and darken the whole sky just like that. Now I can easily fine tune the sky. I can use the exposure slider to lighten or darken that area. I can even shift its color to make it more blue or increase its vibrance. It's a really powerful way to enhance areas of your photo. Let's say I want to lighten the rocks a little bit and more detail. I can simply click the Add Layer button. It'll add another local adjustment layer. Here I'll use the Detail option to paint in more detail. Let's zoom in on the rock a little bit. Now as I paint over the rock, it's going to enhance the detail and sharpness in the rock even more. This will bring out more of the details, more of that micro contrast that really makes the rock an interesting focal point for our photo. You know, maybe I want that to be a little bit lighter as well. I can use the exposure slider to lighten up that area at the same time. There we go. Let's take a look at the before and the after. There's our original photo uncropped and without any of our adjustments. And there's our after using the options in the tone and color pane and using some local adjustments. All right, that's the basics of enhancing and adjusting your photos using the develop module. Thanks for watching.